Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So what we have in front of us here is a motorcycle cylinder head. And what we've got is actually a get her out type situation. This belongs to one of my viewers. His name is Bill Hamilton. He's up in the Oshawa, Ontario, Canada area. And I did not ask him what kind of motorcycle this is off of, nor did he put it in his email, but I'll find out before the end of the video, let you guys know what this is off of. I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably gonna recognize it, but I do not know what it's, what it's from, okay? What he's got is some seized up bolts. One of them is actually already broken off. This one seized off. And he had tried to find some local machinists in his area to, to try to help him. And I don't know what was going on there in his neighborhood, but he didn't have any luck. And so he reached out to me and just said, hey, would this be something that you would be interested in? He's not in a hurry for it. And I looked at it and said, yeah, send it down here. We'll see what we can do about this. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna see if we can get this fixed up. So let's start right here. This is gonna be your exhaust side. This is your exhaust pipe. So when he was, he was disassembling uh, this engine off the bike and everything, and he went to try to remove the exhaust pipe here and this bolt ended up breaking, okay? This one right here, you can see the cap is still on the bolt, but it seized up and he says the inside was already rounded out. That's the way it was whenever he received it. And so he just stopped at that point, took a saw, cut the pipe off and left it on there to uh, you know, deal with later when it's not on the uh, engine there. On this side here, your intake, this is where your carburetor is gonna go on this side of the cylinder. He says that these two screws are seized up or he tried to remove them and they didn't move. So they're, they're tight in there. And he did say that these are the JIS type of uh, screws as well. So he asked if I would go ahead and get those out as well. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to get those two screws out of that side. And then we got to get these two bolts out of that side right there. Now I have been spraying a little bit of penetrant up into here, just using the, uh, the knocker loose right here, just spraying a little at a time, just trying to uh, let some of it maybe get down in there and hopefully when we go to do the repair, maybe that'll help us a little bit, a little bit. So first thing I'm going to try with this one is go ahead. I'm going to pull this thing up probably to an angle plate and we're going to see if we can work this with some pliers. I'm sure it's going to be too tight to move because I'm sure he's already done it, but we're going to give this a shot. Always start with the easiest thing first. And if that doesn't work, then you move on and you, and you take other steps there. Now, now I don't know what we're going to be doing as far as the uh, process to remove it yet. I'm thinking about using some uh, left-handed drill bits to try to get this out. I'm going to have a thousand comments about why didn't you just weld a nut to it because that always works. And I don't do that every time because it doesn't always work. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. So I don't know. I'm just going to uh, bring you along for the journey and see what we can do to get these get these screws out. Now, for these guys right here, I did, uh, one second, I left them right behind you here. So I've got this impact driver kit right here. And I believe that this, this style screw right here, the tip will fit. It seems like it fits that perfectly. It's got a nice snug fit. So what I'm gonna try for these two right here is using the, uh, the good old fashioned impact driver to see if it'll break those two loose right there. And then if, if this doesn't work and it strips it out, then we're gonna have to go to other measures. But we will start with the impact driver on those, those two. All right, so get it set up on an angle plate. I'll bring you back and we'll get started on this. We've got it pulled up to an angle plate there. Angle plate pulled down to the table. That's just to kind of hold it in place uh, right here so we can see we can make this thing move. We're just gonna try some good old vice grip pliers here and see if I can get anything moving. All right, put my glasses back on. I can see the head of it twisting. Definitely tight. Yep, that is. 
It was definitely tight. Yeah, it's just trying to spin on the head of that bolt there. I'm not really doing anything. You can see I'm just tearing the head of the bolt up there. That, I mean, that's so tight. I don't even know if a left-handed drill is going to get it done either. And sometimes those threads just, they just grow together, lock together, and not much you can do except for drilling it out. Try it on this side here. wiggle that thing and get it to break but I don't think that's going to work I think we're going to have to drill that sucker out of there and the, that's what I was going to get at if I get in there with the left hand drill and get the thing drilled out you know or run the drill in there and it doesn't remove the bolt then we're just resorting to you know drilling the uh, the bolt out of the hole completely just gonna keep tapping on it. Try to give it a little bit of shock there. To maybe help break it loose. So I'm gonna keep working that and putting some uh, penetrant down inside there. Just, just do a little at the time and see if that helps. And put some on that side there. My hopes is that maybe some of that penetrant will work its way down in those threads and just help with the removal. I'm going to keep working at this a little bit, just like this, just using a punch and a hammer, try to add a little bit of shock down there to the threads. In hopes that it might come out. We can get the, the bolt to break loose from those threads. We might be able to work it out of there. So just trying that first before we go to the machine. I'm not in a hurry. I get to kind of take my time on this kind of stuff and do what I please with it. Uh, <sighs> Pliers just keep working themselves up off the head of that bolt there like that. I actually feel movement in there I can feel the screw moving just a little bit, and that's what we were looking for right there. We might, all right, I'm not gonna jink myself because it's still liable just to twist the head off just like that one there did, but I've got movement, so I'm gonna keep working it just like we're doing right here. I'm just gonna keep adding a little bit of penetrant and tapping on it with the punch. little time and see if it helps work it loose. See that? So we've got more movement than we did a minute ago. All right, I think that seems to be working. The punch and the hammer is to just try to help break the threads loose from their, you know, their bond with each other. Penetrant, of course, trying to get down in there to them. Got to reset the pliers here. I was able to move that pipe around and give myself a little extra room. See that? More movement now. You just got to keep working it. You might be, you might feel like you want to just, you know, give you all, give it all it's got and pull it on around and try to get it to come out of there. But if you keep working it like that, 
Just keep back and forth, left and right. A lot of times you can get all those threads to work, work themselves loose. See, it, it keeps getting a little easier now. So I think, I think we might have this one, but let's, let's just keep working it and seeing if we can get it. All right, well, I feel good that we were able to get that bolt out without causing any more damage or any more work than what was necessary on it. So that worked out pretty good. There's the, there's the piece of pipe and of course the, uh, the flange. So this guy right there, I'm afraid it's gonna be as tight as this one was right there. So most likely gonna end up going to the milling machine and setting this up and trying the left-handed drills first on this to see if it'll twist it out of there. And if not, we will just end up uh, just drilling it completely out to uh, remove the bolt, running the tap in there and cleaning the threads up. That's most likely how that one's gonna be done. So uh, from here, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. We're gonna see if we can get those other two screws out the, the other side. All right, so we've got our two Phillips head screws there. We need to try to get out. We're gonna be using this guy right here impact driver this is a vessel impact type driver number 2500 n brand new tip this is the one that i told you it seems to be fitting these screws just beautifully got a nice tight fit down in there so we want to make sure we're going left because we're going to be going left-handed direction all right we got our we got our mark lined up on the, the left hand marking there. Let's see if this will work. I'm gonna use my 40 ounce ball peen just to add, have a little bit more weight as we strike this thing. All right. Give it a try and see what happens here. Just give it a little bit of pressure, you know, left hand twist as it's as I'm holding it in there. Look at that. Not a problem at all. Ah, looks like a little Loctite was put on there whenever it was assembled. But that's great that he had actually stopped and didn't, uh, you know, I'm sure it was tight for Bill. So he thought maybe they were seized up just like the other side. So I think for him, it was just, let me let somebody with the, with the right tools try to get these things out. So that's what he did. So I'm glad that that was as simple as that right there. Let's go ahead and see if we can do it with this side here. There we go. I want to go ahead and clean these uh, these tapped holes out. We're going to use a tap there. I got my uh, it's an M6 by 1.0. 
always check your tap just to verify. You know, I pulled it out of my tap case right here. I just want to make sure that was, that was the right one that I pulled out, that it wasn't stuck in the wrong case. Matter of fact, let's see if we can just start it by hand. Get the tap started straight. And then put the tap wrench on there. Just want to clean them out, get that Loctite out of the hole. All right, guys, I'm getting the, the head set up in the mill, so I thought I'd catch you up to speed just to kind of show you what we're doing here. Uh, we usually have a lot of guys interested in this kind of stuff. So what I am using is my adjustable angle plate. You can see you can loosen this thing up and you can rotate it a full 90 degrees. So that works out great for jobs like this. I've shown this many times in some of the older jobs, older videos, where when you need to level something up on two axes, this is a, a great way to do it. So this area right here is what we want to level up. It's really easy to set on the table and go this way, but you got to make sure that it's, um, you know, level the other way as well. So we've got it clamped in there. We got a stud here on this side, the strap clamp. It's just snug in there. It's not tight yet. And once we get everything uh, level the way we want, then I'm probably going to put another clamp over here on this side in this manner here to give this a little support and depending on where it ends up at we may end up putting some kind of uh, wedge or even a machinist jack under this side somewhere just to kind of help any kind of downward pressure you see we're going to be drilling here and I'm going to be putting some force on it trying to get that thing to break loose with the left-handed drill so it could try to push it down which I don't want it to do so we'll make sure that we support the bottom here and another clamp before we get started on it. And I've got my little steric pocket level here that I'll be using to help get it leveled in close, just like you see here. And I'm aware that this is not a machine surface, but this surface right here is gonna be close enough for what we're doing with a drilled hole right there, okay? If you wanna go in there even further and get it absolutely dead nuts, even with this machine surface here, you can certainly, uh, a couple ways you could do that. Come in here with a test indicator and just indicate this, this gasket right there, but you know, this may be off a little bit, or make a plug that sits down in there and then use that to indicate the top of it. But I'm not going that, going that far into it. Once you get it level as close as you can with a level like this, that is that's going to be as close as we need it for drilling out a bolt there.
You've got this machinist jack here with the uh, V block on the top, and I think it's going to fit right here pretty good. It's just to give it support. All right, just trying to get it level. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to finger tight there and I want to give it just a little tiny bit of torque just like that. That'll help keep this from trying to pivot down. That's all that's for. All right, our last clamp going on, we're going to use this cant twist here. It does have the copper blocks, so it should help protect that surface there. What I'm doing is I'm trying to get trying to squeeze it down across where there's material underneath it instead of up here where it's kind of empty underneath. You can see here we got our casting and that's where I'm clamping's right across there. Okay, we're centering up the bolt there. This is a method I've, I, I've always used. Uh, I usually just take a, a two fluid end mill. In this case, this is a 5 16 end mill. This is an eight millimeter bolt, by the way, so they're basically the same size. And what I do is I go in two axes and I center it this way and I center it that way, just visually looking at the tap. Uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the end mill there. So, and I've done that. So I bring it down there close to the head of that bolt. I'm just looking down the sides of the cutting flutes there, trying to get it centered up with the bolt. And same thing with this way. So I'll turn it that direction and bring it down and then move your y-axis until it looks like it's it's well centered up there on the bolt okay and i've got it about where i want it that should be very very close to the center right there which is going to be good enough for uh, trying to get a um, you know a broken bolt out so first thing that we're going to do let me see what speed i'm running i'm in the low end of high gear which is 660. what i want to do is just flatten it out okay we're just going to come down here ever so gently. That's all I'm doing. I'm just cutting it flat. A little bit more. Just like that. That's all we need. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and drill a center. And then we're going to find a left-handed drill bit. And we'll slow the machine way down and see if we can make that drill plunge deep into that bolt and try to break it loose and spin out of there. This is a quarter inch spotting drill. All we're doing that, all we're doing with this is just spotting the center of it. Creating a nice divot for our other drills to follow down inside that bolt. There we go. I've actually got a uh, small handful of metric left-handed drills that a viewer had given me I don't know, some time back. This is a Presto brand, made in the UK, 5.7 millimeter, which is actually one millimeter smaller than the uh, tap size, but getting it up to tap size is not a problem. I want to use the size about like this right here to hopefully have enough uh, flute there and diameter to help grab that broken bolt and hopefully crack it loose and spin it out of there. I don't know how how it's going to do it just may be too tight for it to uh, come loose but we're going to give it a try i'm going to set up my other camera to um, give you a tighter shot to see what's going on here and hopefully if this thing cracks loose and comes out you'll have a good video of of it doing its thing all right
left hander did not do the job. It's just in there too tight. There's a slightly larger drill at 6.2 millimeter left hand. We'll give this a try and see if it'll help crack it loose. Threads are just too galled together for it to come out. All right, at this point, we're just going to be trying to drill it out and uh, just removing the rest of the bowl. I've got a letter F drill in there, which is uh, 257 thou. We'll see if that one will get the bolt drilled out. I'm just checking to make sure we're in the center there. like that's going to be about it. I felt like some of it dropped down in the bottom. At this point, I'm having to try to use a pick to see if I can pull the, the what's left of the thread out. Without breaking it, but it's very difficult. Let's see if I can get that started up. Man, that thread is just stuck to that wall, of that, that tapped hole. If I can get some of the threads up top here cleared out, I can run a tap down in there. Yeah, we're just working it out of there. All right, we should have gotten all of the bolt out of there. I felt like uh, every bit of it pulled out. So we've got a M8 by 1.25 tap that we'll run down in there to clean the threads out with. Just putting a little bit of tap magic on here. I can tell that I centered up well on the on the bolt there. If I was off any, it must have been, you know, five thousandths or so. I didn't realize it uh, until I drilled it, but this hole actually went all the way through to the other side there. All right, so that that tap is nice and snug in that hole there so we have we still have a good threaded hole in the cylinder head looks good do the same with that other side get it cleaned out
This job is finished. We just got to get it out of the machine and get everything cleaned up and put away. So we'll go ahead and unclamp it and take it out. Get the jack out from under it there. And as I was saying earlier in the repair, going into it, I had a I had a good hunch that that bolt that was already broken, the head of the bolt broken off there, that it was gonna be that tight in that hole. And just because I've seen this, I, there's no telling how many of these, these types of jobs that I've, you know, have been tasked to do over the years, probably, you know, a couple hundred at least, probably more than that. And sometimes, sometimes the, uh, the bolt is so stuck to that aluminum there or the the housing itself that no amount of heat heating beating penetrating oil welding on it or anything even the you know mechanical tools such as cutting tools is going to get it out of there you just have to i mean do like we did you just have to drill the bolt out and remove what's left of the bolt just like we showed right there now i'm not saying that there's other folks out there that can't come over here with their welders and weld something to it and keep working it like I did on the first bolt because that's another way to do it. I mean, some folks, they'd just rather do that than, than uh, set it up in a machine. For me, I'd personally rather come over here. It's a cleaner job for me to come over here to the machine and set a part like this up in the mill and use cutting tools and cut the bolt out rather than trying to weld on it and put a bunch of heat on this part. So you see it worked out well for me, and it did good. Didn't damage the threads. Now it's ready to uh, for the rest of the repair to go back together. Well, there we have it. Job finished up. Everything worked out well for me. We didn't have any catastrophes. We didn't damage the uh, threaded holes there, getting them out. Those were real easy, just having the, uh, the right tool there with that impact driver to remove those. JIS screws. I believe this this piece here is going to have to be replaced. You can you can see it's cracked there. So maybe he's planning on doing that. I don't know. Just observing. All right. And then at least he's got the flange there for the exhaust. And I'm sure he can find a new exhaust somewhere for this uh, particular bike. By the way, uh, I have not heard back from Bill on what type of uh, bike or engine this is going on so at this point I, I really don't know uh, you guys can leave your comments down in the uh, you know below the video if you guys know what it is so everybody can find out I do not recognize it I don't know what it is what it's off of but I did have a lot of fun uh, doing this and sharing it with you you know always showing the the machinist ways to try to extract bolts without putting a bunch of weld spatter and a bunch of heat into a part like that not to mention sometimes places just like this where it's actually hard to get in there and uh you know with wrenches and try to um you know remove a broken bolt with a a nut or something welded on there so just a tricky place to have to try to get in there and do some welding because of these cooling fins there in the way same thing with this over there so the uh the drill method worked well for me all right so I'm going to box this thing up and get ready to send it back up to Canada. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this project and we will see you on the next one.